stand up a little bit for a word of prayer, please. Lord, we thank you. And we pray that you will be present once more in this presentation. That we may be fed, that we may be blessed, and that we may have some strategies uh, how to do a better ministry for you. We pray that you will assist Pastor Pandeirot through your spirit as he is going to present his paper in this forum. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you. We have the next presentation now. And this presentation will be done by Pastor Pandeirot. We are happy to have him here in this forum. And uh, I knew him in the class of Revelation. He's a man who likes to ask questions related to exegesis. And I was not surprised to see his paper focusing on uh, exegesis. He's presenting miracle uh, healing on Sabbath, an exegetical study based on uh, Mark chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 6. So we are refreshing a little bit our mind and we come back to the Bible to question the Bible about healing on Sabbath. And uh, Pastor Pandeirot is going to address this question and we welcome him. Thank you, Pastor, for accepting to present this paper. Uh, you have uh, 15 minutes to present the findings and then we will have 20 minutes for the questions. Thank you.
Okay, good morning to all of us. Firstly, I would like to uh, say thank you for the ITA uh, officer, Pastor Ekoto, the president, and uh, Pastor Yustri, Pastor Watson, uh, Pastor Kambale, uh, and everyone who is uh, here to hear this presentation. Okay, I will not present about uh, African experience about Sabbath, but I will present about biblical base, biblical base that um, the African made the concept in the Bible, in the Bible that uh, African people can experience uh, something about that. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, healing on Sabbath and exegesis of Mark 3, verse 1 to 6. This is the text. And Jesus entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man with a withered hand. And some people were, were watching him to see it, if he would see, uh, heal the man on Sabbath in order to accuse him. And Jesus said to the man, rise in the midst, in the, come, into, come and uh, rise and come forward. And he said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to do kill? They keep silent. And after looking uh, around with anger, he uh, command the man to straight, straight out uh, his hand. He straight out and uh, his hand completely uh, restored. And the Pharisees went out uh, immediately, began to, uh, talking counsel, taking counsel with the Herodians against him as uh, to how they might destroy him. This is uh, an intentional confrontation by Jesus. He uh, uh, called the man into, into the midst and he healed on Sabbath. So, my question, what is the implication of intentional action of Jesus healing on Sabbath? There's a um, discussion about this issue. Some scholar they propose that Jesus affirmed the noble work on the first day on of the week, Sunday. Another introduced the abrogation of the seven day Sabbath. But uh, some uh, argue that Jesus lessened the meaning of special day of, of on Sabbath, while other prefer to the to relate the healing on Sabbath with salvation. Sabbath is the main issue in this uh, passage, so. I would like to trace the history of the Sabbath. It is uh, on the Old Testament. On the Old Testament, the origin could be traced from the creation in Genesis uh, two, first to some to three, with the implied command to observe the seven day Sabbath as a day of worship. There are three fold: um, rest, blessing, and the holiness. In the book of Exodus, the Sabbath relate with manna, manna that feed the nation of Israel and the manna is a um, tool to educate the Israelite to observe the commandment commandment of God reg regarding the day of rest and worship in the uh, uh, Sinai Exodus 20 the law the Sabbath was given in the form of of law in the Decalogue to accept God's gift for man to follow the divine exemplar pattern, to acknowledge him as creator, and to participate in God's rest. This, um, this account, also parallel with Deuteronomy 5, verse 12 to 15, may, um, that will uh, presented by Pastor Ekoto. Uh, and the uh, emphasis on the Deuteronomy is about the deliverance, freedom from the slavery. And there is a connection of a Sabbath in Exodus 31 and the 35 with the sanctuary. It is the in the chiastic structure of the sanctuary. Dr. Fry have um, the chiastic structure. And the, there is a strong emphasis of the Sabbath because of the death penalty for those who transgress uh, 
the holiness and then doing word on on the Sabbath. Uh, Prophet Isaiah reminded the things that must and must not to do in Isaiah 58 verse 13 and 14. And uh, emphasize in the holiness of the Sabbath and uh, the ideal of the Sabbath observ observance. Um, do this and do this. Uh, and the prophet Ezekiel also point out the Sabbath as the sign of belonging between God and the Creator and His creation in Ezekiel uh, 20. There, is a, there are some biblical, extra biblical evidence of uh, writing that could be found in Judith, for example, Judith uh, 8, verse 6, that date around 150 and 125 BC, that confirmed the existence of the Sabbath. In the period of the Intertestament, the, the Sabbath still exists, but the spiritual leaders, they changed the essence of the Sabbath. They added heavy requirements to the law of Sabbath, that introduced in the Old Testament. They make um, uh, legal law into Mishnah. We see a 39 uh, prohibition on Sabbath. And it is a um, um, legal law that need to be obeyed. They, they uh, create this uh, Mishnah, this uh, regulation, this, rigid, uh, this um, strict observance in order to protect the nation from the uh, from the uh, apostasy, they do, they experience that because of the their failure to keep the Sabbath, then they uh, uh, they uh, went to the exile. Then they try to make a um, um, misna to to prevent to prevent um, the the failure. And in the New Testament, the Sabbath also exists. The Greek word sabbaton, it means a week or sabbat or time of sacred rest. The same uh, word it um, derived from the Hebrew sabbat, that means to cease and to pause. It is the continuation of the Old Testament concept of stop working for sacred worship. However, the strict and heavy observance still inherited from the period of intertestamental period it is it was the custom of Jesus to enter in the synagogue on Sabbath to read from the scripture Jesus also observed the Sabbath and also followed by Paul in his ministry journey to enter synagogue and Sabbath and read from the scripture in Luke 4 16 and Acts 13 14 this uh, the, the uh, the episode of healing on Sabbath it's, it's, uh, was happened in the synagogue. Synagogue derived from the Greek word synagogue that lexically means synagogue, assembly. It also could mean a collecting or a gathering. It uh, was origi originated from the captivity when the Jews separated from the worship and fellowship of the temple and they try to create atmosphere like in the Jerusalem. They separate from the Jerusalem, but they would like to make a um, um, situation and atmosphere like um, the, they, they worship in the Jerusalem. They gather together among themselves for praying, reading, and practice, practicing the scripture in the small group. Then the practice continued throughout, throughout the period of Inter-Testament inter and the New Testament. It then developed to the physical building of the synagogue, the center of the of Jewish community, like the local senate or university. Um, Pharisees is one of the uh, character that involved in the story. They are antagonist character in the Gospel of Mark. They involve. Uh, several confrontation with Jesus regarding regarding certain issues like eating with sinners, fasting, observance of the Sabbath, healing on Sabbath, divorce, and washing, and other 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 issues. The Pharisees uh, or, originated in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, who per, uh, performed the uh, reforms 
concerning the observance of festival, Jewish festival, tithing and purity. They separate themselves from ordinary people who contaminated with the paganism and apostasy, and they emphasize the strict observance of the law. Um, when Jesus healed the man, at the end of the story we already read, that uh, Pharisees and the Herodians, they made counsel in order to kill Jesus. The Herodians also are uh, involved in the story. And Herodians derive from the Greek word that means Herodians as the Jewish sect, the one thinking like Herod. They were the uh, ally of Herodians di dynasty. They consist that consists of Herodian family members, supporters, uh, administrators, and civic elite. Sorry, recently they came from Hasmonean dynasty, but they were proselytes to Judaism, and at times, at the time, they sought to strengthen their bond, bond with the Jews through careful planned marriage to prominent Jewish family. In the New Testament, they involve always uh, involve confrontation with Jesus. Uh, regarding Sabbath and the uh, tax to, to Caesar. Uh, one of the uh, uh, significant issues is about healing. It derives from the Greek word therapeuo that lexically means to heal, to cure. It could be added to meaning to serve, to minister, to render service and attendance, to render divine service. In the synoptic gospel, this word therapy uh, mostly described the action of Jesus to heal the diseases and weakness of people. This action required faith and belief in order to receive the, the remedy. On the other hand, this action also relate with the salvation when Jesus saved the soul of the person to, together with the healing of physical sickness. When Jesus healed the man with the shrivel hand, he restored completely physical, social, and spiritual being of the of the person. Exame, uh, exestin, lawful. When Jesus asked, "Is it uh, which is lawful?" Uh, from this uh, word, exestin, that means uh, it is allowed, it is possible. It could also, uh, could also means it is permitted. This confrontation relate with the additional law that was added by Jewish leader after the exile. So, uh, the Jewish, uh, the Pharisees, uh, um, means the something that um, lawful according to the uh, Jewish Jewish um, law. The action was lawful or not depend on the things that could danger a person's life. In the emergency situation of the sick man, that could cause the man uh, die, an action could be done by doing work or healing the man. In the eyes of the Pharisees, the, the situation of the man with withered hand was not dangerous for his life. So the action for healing could be seen uh, as unlawful. On the other hand, the action of murder obviously could be seen as transgression to the Decalogue, doing against the sixth commandment of the Decalogue. I found a uh, structure in this uh, story, a chiastic structure. Uh, it starts when, uh, with Jesus, when he entered into synagogue, there was a man with a shriveled hand. And ended when Jesus departed, out from, went out from the synagogue with disciples to the lake. And the second one is the Pharisees and the Pharisees. Pharisees watched closely if he would him would heal him, and the Pharisees made counsel with the Herodians to kill Jesus. Uh, they went out, going out is the participle. And C is uh, Jesus said to the man, uh, um, it is a parallel with the command in C. Jesus said to the man, straight, um, stand up in the midst and then straight out your hand. And Jesus asked them, but they were silent. And the center of the chiastic is, uh, the, the question which is lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil to save life or to kill the center of the structure is about the, uh, the question which is lawful on the Sabbath do good or do evil to save life or to kill 
this is the center and this is um, the main idea the uh, center point of the uh, structure or, or the narrative and this is not a mirror equation but it's rhetorical question rhetorical question to Jesus of Jesus to the people it doesn't need uh, an answer because it's obvious but it has uh, something to be emphasized it is lawful to do good and to save life on the Sabbath day this question also is a trap for the opponents because if they say in a negative way they say uh, uh, it is uh, lawful to kill or to do evil they will be blamed but if they say uh, in positive way it is lawful uh, to uh, to do good and to save life it means that they uh, allow Jesus to um, heal the man um, and he entered again into synagogue there's um something that I want to emphasize in this uh, phrase and he entered again into this now emphasizing with the adverb of palin it's a uh, serve ad adverb adjective to the SL10 uh, entered that uh, means again it uh, implied the repetition repetitive um, action of Jesus it means that it's not the first time Jesus entered the synagogue on Sabbath it could like um, I, I could see this from two perspective the first is the link to the previous uh, action the pre previous uh, controversy uh, when Jesus um, performed miracle healing in the synagogue on the Sabbath when Jesus driven, dry, uh, drove out um, impure spirit from a man and it could relate for uh, with the to the confrontation in the grain field in Mark 2. On the other hand, this uh, Palin also could show the habitual action of Jesus. This is not the first time Jesus entered in the synagogue because um, there's evidence that Jesus already entered in, in the synagogue. And in the Mark 6, uh, it's also recorded that, that Jesus also were in the, uh, was in the synagogue. So it is a habitual action that Jesus entered a place of worship on the Sabbath day in the synagogue. Now, uh, the command of Jesus, Egeire, is to Mason, um, raise up in the midst. It is a command that occurs in the imper imperative mood. Jesus wanted, and I could see this from two perspectives. The first one, uh, Jesus wants to restore the social aspect of this man. If you know that if a sick person is like a um, social outcast in the com uh, community. But uh, when Jesus uh, called him into the, to the midst, uh, Jesus wants to restore, restore the uh, social aspect uh, from, from this person. On the other hand, this uh, comment also emphasizes the intention of Jesus to involve into confrontation. Jesus, well, can when Jesus can uh, heal him uh, silently, but Jesus called him into the midst to raise attention from the people in order to introduce the teaching and idea about the healing on Sabbath. Okay. I found contrast in positive and negative. The, man, the hand of the man was restored and the heart of the opponent was hardened to do good, to save, uh, to save life, to do, to do evil and to kill. Jesus healed the man's hand but the opponents uh, made plot to kill Jesus. I found the restoration and the fall. Contextual analysis, it's the, the context uh, is about the Sabbath, the driven out of the spirit in the Capernaum and the um, confrontation in the grain field and uh, uh, healing um, with a, a man with a withered hand. Jesus wants to emphasize the idea that Sabbath was made for the sake of human being. The, the previous idea in the uh, Mark 2, 23, 20, uh, 20, uh, 28. Now the conclusion. The origin of the Sabbath and its observance originated from the creation and continued through the prophet of the, of the Old Testament that emphasized Sabbath as a sacred day of worship. 
the day of deliverance and the sign of belonging or of creator. The rigid of observance of the Sabbath originated after the captivity together with the group of Pharisees and the custom of synagogue. They made them in order to be survived in the exile and to prevent from the future fall. Jesus did, did not abrogate the Sabbath nor change the holiness to other day um, because Jesus observed the same Sabbath of the Jews as the Jews as because uh, as his custom Jesus entering synagogue and reading from the scripture Jesus did not did the miracle healing intentionally because he wanted to emphasize the original essence of Sabbath to the people the Sabbath was made for the sake of human beings he healed the man with the bitter hand and at the same time he brought the salvation and for uh, and the uh, restore the social value and the of the person even though for others the sabbath became the day of fall but for others the sabbath was the day of healing restoration and salvation thank you thank you pastor pandey road any question we will record all the questions and then uh, he will answer them later one, two, three. Okay, we can start there. Thank you very much for the paper. I was just reflecting about this issue of Jesus' work, because this is Jesus' work on the Sabbath. Uh, what was running through my mind? The Sabbath was not just for healing, the physical healing. It was for the totality because according to your explanation, it's, it's complete. How can we explain this complete restoration in terms of how we relate to the Sabbath? In most places, uh, we have suggestions on cook your food on Friday and eat I mean, so that you will not have anything to do. I was just reflecting. I don't know whether it's part of a, a, a can sell the concept of this paper. Uh, many families eat cold food or nothing at all, and the young ones in the home do not see the restoration of the Sabbath. So how can we describe Jesus' physical healing? of giving full joy to people on the Sabbath when we deny them of some uh, things that will not make the Sabbath a delight in court for that particular person. Because if I deny my children from eating a very delicious meal, for me it's good, but for them it's not good. They are not restored. I am restored. How can we harmonize those complete restoration on the Sabbath through this uh, exegetical work. Thank you. Pastor Nicholas. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for the presentation. My professor once gave uh, a story from Andrews and said a Jew rabbi walked into the Andrews church and worshipped with them. And after worship, one member came and told him, Rabbi, you see, we worship on the Sabbath. And the rabbi philosophically replied, I have observed that you keep the Sabbath, but the Jews, we celebrate the Sabbath. I, 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 I was looking at when you mentioned that the intention of the Pharisees in enacting the laws I find the intention to be very good. They are protecting, they, they, they have a fear of falling. And uh, somehow I see it in my church that we are so afraid to offend. Could this also have an impact on our experience of the Sabbath? Because Jesus is intentional here, trying to shift the mind, in my opinion, to look at the positive and the beauty of the Sabbath rather than concentrating on the result of breaking it in the sense. Not that breaking it is not important, but I see the Pharisees had 
a pure motive, a, beauty, a good motive. They didn't want to fall again, as you mentioned, the fall, our future fall. Could this also have a bearing in our experience as Adventists, in our experience of the Sabbath? Could this deter us from celebrating the Sabbath and rather focus on keeping it? Thank you. And a question? Okay, he can answer the two questions. If you have another one, we will come back to, to it. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Foley. Uh, so you are asking about the complete restoration? Yeah, complete restoration about the Sabbath for those who are like cooking or, uh, yeah, yes. Okay. Probably it's the same, almost the similar question. Okay. Uh, in my place in uh, Indonesia, there are some places there with uh, church members is very that uh, very strict to observe the Sabbath. Um, if the kitchen still, oh, by the way, we don't have uh, we don't uh, use gas, but we use uh, wood as, uh, for cooking. Uh, ju we just use gas recently. But if they see the kitchen is still uh, smoking, <laughs> they will just uh, pour some water in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, it's, you know, my, my experience when I was a kid, the, the Sabbath is like burden. It's like, well, I, cannot, I cannot do this, I cannot do this because of the um, uh, elderly people. I cannot do this. So I, it's like a burden. I just keep, I just uh, observe it. I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy it. But uh, by this uh, episode, I see that Jesus brings something, it's something new in the uh, Sabbath observance. It's not like uh, the strict and rigid observance of the Jews that they introduce, but it's like for the sake of the human beings, how we uh, restore, how we uh, celebrate, how we feel uh, salvation. Uh, I I interested with um, Dr. Gaikwat yesterday how they celebrate Sabbath in their house. It's like celebration, enjoy. It's not um, keeping with the strict regulation. But um, for me, I see Jesus. Uh, if you see the the uh, contrast, there is a restoration. Uh, there is fall from the Jews, but there is a, a restoration. I would like to see this this um, this story from the perspective of the balance. From the perspective of the the author of Mark uh, emphasize the uh, uh, the. Okay, I would like to, yeah, the contrast, okay, to the good, to the safe, but I would like to see this story from the perspective of the balance. It's not, it's not um, strict observance, like uh, the Jews, like uh, the the Jews in the intertestament, intertestament, but also it's not a uh, secular celebration. It's not a secular celebration. Because remember, Jesus still observed the Sabbath. Jesus entered in the synagogue. Jesus uh, read from the from the scripture. Jesus prayed in the in the synagogue. It's it's in balance. It's not uh, uh, secular. It's like uh, easy celebration. Okay, since this is for uh, my my um, for the sake of human being, I can do this. Everything. Oh no, it's it's there's a balance here. 
it's not strict it's not uh, too too liberal thank you so much thank you shall we give a big hand to pastor Pandirot? thank you may god bless you for this presentation now we are inviting Mrs. Pandirot. She is in the congregation and uh, she's having a special song. Can we welcome her?